He who controls the storm. Storms past and storms present, because of their ferocious natures, many destructive in character and in their presentation, have earned their unforgettable place within the memories of many and have permanently etched themselves into the landscape of history. History which has reminded man that despite the great accomplishments he has been allowed to achieve, natural forces still present themselves as one of the most credible threats to those accomplishments. We have become almost intimately familiar with their character, so much so that, we have devised intelligent technology that warns of their awakening and measures their origins and capabilities, in fact we have gone as far as to assigning them names, taking a closer look at some interesting characteristics of these forces we know as storms you'll discover the following, despite the fact that man was created to have dominion over all life, and to be a powerful force on the planet, nature can still strike terror into his heart when she stirs up a storm. In land, a storm is defined as a violent atmospheric disturbance, impacting the atmosphere with strong winds, usually rain, thunder, lightning, or snow. Additionally, it is any disturbed state or upheaval of a tremendous body with a violent outburst, especially affecting its surface, and strongly implying severe weather. At sea, a storm may be a strong wind or gale. Its powerful force has claimed the lives of many people. Severe storms have sunken ships of great stature and impressive construction. However, regardless of their size or buoyancy capabilities, many a ship or great buildings having with fortification requirements that may exceed expectations can be destroyed within mere seconds or sink to unimaginable depths because the powers of man are no match for the ferocious nature of an angry storm, a storm usually covers an area hundreds of miles across. It represents huge circular whirls of air rotating about a central point of low atmospheric pressure. Such storms begin where cold dry masses of air moving southward from Arctic regions are met by warm moist air masses, which are moving northward from the tropics. In certain places, great bands warm air thrust their way into the cold. The tip of such a warm air thrust becomes a spot of low atmospheric pressure, toward which the winds blow, and the storm area develops around it, as cold and warm air mix together. One such storm took place at sea in Acts, chapter 27. This story serves as the foundation for my message today, He Who Controls the Storm. In Acts 27, you'll discover the experience of Paul who was a prisoner at the time, as he was traveling by ship on his way to Rome to be tried for a crime he didn't commit, with 267 others, many of whom were prisoners as well. They became involved in a horrendous storm that could have easily taken their lives, but an interesting turn of events took place which resulted in their survival, all of them. Find and read the story in Acts 27 beginning with verse 1. From this story you are reminded of some of the storms faced by many, both inside and outside of our churches today. You'll discover that this story also brings hope for survival because like in the story you just read, despite the nature of the storm experienced, in fact any storm life presents, there is someone who stands in the middle and has the capability to tame them all. His name is God Almighty. From this story there are five types of life storms as well as the antidote of how to become resistant to them. I'm truly inspired and extremely excited to share them with you. Thank you for allowing me to do that. Let's look at each life storm in turn, personal storm. Not limited by who we are. They are no respecter of persons and have the ability to strike anyone at any time. For example, severe illness, cancer, body forming dysfunctions, and many other forms. Cause, number one. Poor nutrition resulting from disobeying God's prescribed choices in foods for healthy living, found in Leviticus 11. Cause number two. Born with issues as a result of the actions from choices parents may have made. Reference King David's story of son created in adultery with Bathsheba sinful choices, generational curses causing disastrous results. Storm number two. Addictions has a wide variety in range, smoking, drugs, pornography, alcohol, overeating, and much more. Storm number three, relationships and unresolved circumstances. Some of the most destructive storms can occur in relationships, physical and verbal abuse, abandonment people turn their backs on each other and sometimes on God himself, storms causing complete breakdown of the family structure resulting in displacement of children, murder, depression and more. Examples. Number 1 Samson and Delilah, Number 2. 
King Solomon and his 700 wives and 300 concubines having all having an ungodly mindset. A godly man buried in ungodly activities, a life gone bad. Number 3. Joseph man of God, obedient son, born having jealous brothers who made a portion of his life miserable. Number 4. Ahab. And Jezebel. M. Godly king married to an ungodly wife. 1 Kings 18. Storm number 4. Storms resulting from disobedience to God. Jonah intentional disobedience. Jonah 1 in cases like these, one attracts storms of the worst kind because of intentional disobedience. Satan, despite knowing what's in store for him one day, hell fire resulting in utter destruction, instead of choosing eternal life filled with God's abundant greatness, he still chooses to defy God as his creator and to do his will. Storm number 5, Character Testing Storms, these storms are created by God for many reasons. Two of the most well-known are to help us create a godly character, and to let Satan know that you will stand firm despite his attacks on you. In order to become more storm-resistant there are some very important precautions you must put in place if you expect to survive. First, you must get rid of the unnecessary. You must evaluate and take action to throw out the unnecessary baggage, throw out the unnecessary behaviors, throw out the unnecessary habits, cut ties with the unnecessary company that gets in the way of God's plans for your life. You must discard the worthless weight that makes you more prone to damage as you encounter the storms of this life. Second, you must appreciate being around the positive, godly people the Lord has placed into your life. Paul wasn't appreciated in the story because of his status, prisoner, convict, in life. He attained the title due to being wrongly accused and hence judged by others who knew nothing about his character, ungodly folks who thought his recommendations regarding the nature of the storm were of no value. You should never judge a book without first reading its pages. In order to take his focus from negative, non-productive and life-threatening circumstances, Paul was always poised, ready and willing to help others. His attitude was always positive, and because of it, he attracted the best of favors from his captors as well as his creator. He gained the respect of the islanders, and because of his status with the Almighty. Notice the part of the story where when he was bitten by a snake, its venom had no impact on him. You see, Paul knew who was in control of all these storms. Have you ever been caught in the storms of life and felt alone, desolate, weather beaten and perhaps without hope at times? Has the storm been severe enough to have torn your ship apart and left you shipwrecked without a life jacket and the distance from shore seemed impossible to reach without assistance? Were the waves so cruel, you had to cut loose the lifeboat, you thought, was your very best option in order to survive? Have you had to throw all of your precious cargo over the side of the breaking ship and now have nothing to show as the purpose of your journey was gobbled up by the relentless storm? Were you involved in the past or at the present moment in a storm where the opinions of many, the harmful self-inflicted actions you may have caused yourself, your distance away from God were against you so much, they left you wondering if someone will ever come your way to save you from further peril? I'm here to tell you child of God, that sometimes you don't have to drown trying to grab the big part of the wreckage, but you can make it by holding on to a smaller, more buoyant piece. You can hold on to the assurance God has given in his anointed words when he expressed that through him all things are possible. You can hold on to his promise of hope and his encouragement when he tells you that despite your circumstances, I will never leave you nor forsake you, especially when you are caught up in the middle of your storm. Hold on to the confidence and courageous mindset you will achieve, as you'll be able to say without fear. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Always keep in mind, sometimes God is the very one who sends the storm. Notice in the Jonah experience, and now in the Paul experience, these men were surrounded by people who never made God a priority in their lives, but because of the proclamation of these godly men that they receive instructions from God Almighty. Even while engaged in a raging storm, favors were given, the ungodly became godly, lives were saved, poisonous snakes made harmless, thousands got saved and best of all, God's name was magnified. I invite you my friend to close your eyes for a few moments, as you to think along with me, about the last storm you came through, or one from which you might still be trying to find your way to shore. Despite the strength or the length of your storm, God Almighty is stronger. 
When you feel the south wind beginning to give signs that a storm might be coming your way, or it may have already arrived and taken you by surprise. Leave your ears and your options open, because the Lord will certainly be somewhere in the middle of it. Look for your purpose. Check with him for your assignment, because some poor sinking seaman might be in need of your assistance. God has never left you, he will never forsake you. He wants for you to be a leader, who knows just how to handle stormy situations, so you can with all courage and surety, point others into the direction of the lighthouse. He sometimes creates your storm, so he can have you reflect his light to someone who needs to understand and follow his character through you in order to be saved. Just remember that there may be times when the storms created were never about you, but they were created to form the perfect backdrop for a divine experience, an experience that can only be understood and appreciated with the calm thereafter. As you open your eyes now, don't get sidetracked by the false, faith-free and arrogant opinions of stiff-necked many who have no clue about whose you are because they can either be blessed by your presence, or continue to suffer from ignorance. You are special to God. Remember, that it is He who controls all storms, and He will always be standing by to show you the perfect way to stand erect, shoulders straightened as you walk victoriously toward the path of perfect peace, despite the nature of the raging storm. May God continue to cover you with his love like honey covers the honeycomb, and fill you with his Holy Spirit causing you to crave after his wonderful blessings. His provisions for eternal life, and grant you his divine protection for you, your family and everyone in your community regardless of their status in life, all the days of your life. God bless you.